Tonight, Amazon declares war on publishers. Google's got its eye on Skybox and a tablet for Project Tango. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 94 for Friday, May 23rd, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Amazon is going for the jugular with publisher Hatchet and last night started refusing orders for upcoming Hatchet books, including J.K. Rowley's new novel and Brad Stone's The Everything Store, Jeff Bezos and the Age of Amazon. But that's not all. In Germany, Amazon is delaying deliveries of books issued by major publisher Bonnier, and the German Publishers and Booksellers Association's antitrust experts are looking into whether these tactics violate the law. So what's going on? Amazon wants better terms on ebooks out of Hatchet and Bonnier, which would provide or improve rather Amazon's profit margins. In Hatchet's case, it's cutting the customer's discount so the book's price is almost at list price, slowing shipments of books by weeks, suggesting customers buy other books instead, and increasing the discount for the Kindle version. Uh, Hatchet children, uh, children's book author Nina Layden has spoken out against Amazon. She notes that, quote, saying that our books will ship in three to five weeks when they are in stock is not only a disgusting negotiation practice, but it has made me tell my readers to shop elsewhere. Twitter has honored five requests in the past month uh, from Abdul Batin of the Pakistan Telecommunications Authority to block certain accounts, tweets, or searches on Twitter that he described as blasphemous or unethical. The blocking of these tweets is in line with a country-specific censorship policy Twitter implemented in 2012, but it's first time the social network has agreed to withhold content in Pakistan. Uh, Twitter has always claimed a commitment to free speech, but argues that it's a lesser evil to block specific tweets that might violate local laws than to have the entire site blocked in certain countries. The company posts a record of every request it honors in the Chilling Effects Clearinghouse, a database that's run by eight U.S. law schools and the Electronic Frontier Foundation. In the past, Twitter has blocked neo-Nazi tweets from German users and tweets from an ultra-nationalist Ukrainian group from Russian users. LG's upcoming G3 smartphone can claim something pretty impressive, a laser autofocus system on its camera. The laser will detect the depth of the subject you want to take a picture of and speed up the time from tapping the digital shutter to capturing the image, which is more precise and the faster and faster with optical systems. The rear camera on the G3 will have a 13 megapixel sensor, the front facing camera 2.1 megapixels. LG also says it's introducing new gesture recognition that will have the G3 take a selfie when you clench your fist in front of it. More details at LG's launch event in London next Tuesday. YouTube has announced Creator Preview. It's a new initiative in the form of a video series where the company shares features it's working on for creators. In its first video, YouTube says it's building a mobile app for creators, which allows fans to directly contribute funds to creators and a way to harness the power of the crowd to create captions and subtitles for your videos in more than 60 languages. YouTube says it will be releasing these creator preview videos regularly. The Wall Street Journal reports that Google's Project Tango is taking on production of a new tablet, and the company says it plans to produce around 4,000 of the prototype tablets starting next month, citing anonymous sources. The device could include a 7-inch screen and have two back cameras, infrared depth sensors, and advanced software that can capture precise three-dimensional images of objects. Project Tango is part of Google's Advanced Technology and Projects Group, Back in February, the research group released a prototype smartphone also covered in sensors and designed to create three-dimensional maps of its users' surroundings, which could be used for improved indoor navigation for the visually impaired, step-by-step -step directions within stores, and a more immersive video game experience. Now, coming up, it started back in 2011, but the anti-poaching case of Silicon Valley's biggest companies may finally be over. But first, I'm joined by Seth Rosenblatt, senior editor, or sorry, senior writer for CNET News, an all-around good guy. How's it going, Seth? Good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. It's good to have you here. Uh, let's chat about Google a little bit, their acquisition happy lifestyle. The latest startup yes. uh, supposedly in their sites is Skybox Imaging, according to sources. Skybox Imaging yes. is a Mountain View company that specializes in high-resolution landscape 
Imaging. So, Seth, yeah. tell me a little bit more about what Skybox Imaging does and that might specifically have caught Google's attention here. Yes. Uh, well, first off, you got to remember uh, to call them Skybox and not Skynet. Okay. There's a uh, there's a little temptation there to run with that <laughs> Distinct one. Distinct but subtle. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> uh, and the uh, what they do basically is uh, high resolution uh, photos and video uh, taken from uh, low Earth orbit. So uh, the potential there for Google is that they can bolster bolster uh, Google Earth and uh, Google Maps with real time uh, data from uh, you know a, a small fleet of satellites orbiting the Earth. Yeah, I mean that's that's obviously the probably the the easiest point of comparison, right? To yeah, what Google has yeah. in its stable, their Google Maps and and Earth. It's a uh, teeters, I would imagine, teeters on the creepy factor for some people to know that hey, wait a minute, their mapping product might actually see live or at least up to the day uh, updates in their satellite imagery. How how could you uh, Google use this purchase to their business advantage in other ways, like Titan Aerospace to tie into that Project Loon? Uh, what else sure. do you think they could do with it? Sure. Well, you know, the, the, the idea, I think, is that uh, search advertising isn't really growing much. Um, it's right. certainly decreasing on desktops and it's growing on mobile, but really only Facebook has been able to totally capitalize on that. Google has been doing better capitalizing on mobile than others, but it's not doing it at a Facebook-like level. And we've known for some time that they're looking at expanding beyond uh, search advertising. So if you can imagine what a company that does uh, immense analytics like Google could do with the data from uh, real-time virtual Earth, uh, you know, shot constantly by, by these satellites, uh, it, it's really quite remarkable. Um, uh, how they would monetize it, there hasn't been really been much speculation at this point, but uh, no doubt that Google's ability to uh, sell those maps um, would be a big part of it. We do know that they have an enterprise business for selling those maps and allowing companies to customize their use of them. They also sell them to government institutions, uh, research organizations, universities. So uh, it wouldn't be very difficult to see how something like this would fit in with their current business plan. Sure. And we've kind of been hearing for a while, too, now that Google has an interest in this whole satellite game, satellite, you know, buying into the satellite business in, one sure. in some way. Um, sure. Do you think this purchase would provide an immediate value to Google or is this, like you say, something no. maybe a little bit more of a long term play? Yeah, I think this is really a, a, a long term play. This is something that's um, going to play out over uh, five years at least. Yeah. Um, they may be able, if if they even go ahead and do purchase uh, uh, Skybox or one of its competitors, um, one of the points of the story is that uh, the the original source of it on TechCrunch uh, hedged their their source pretty uh, pretty heavily. So we're not even sure that this is going to happen. Um, if it does happen, you know, it, it would be for five years down the line, not not some sort of uh, one year turnaround. Yeah, and if, if a company is going to do this and do it right, I, I would imagine Google's you know has deep enough pockets to do it because I think in that same TechCrunch article they were talking mm. just kind of about the risk factor that Skybox you know a they're they're about to run out of funding so they they're kind of hedging yeah. their bets and hoping that this happens because otherwise they're going to have to go for another round but also right. just that it's really expensive to put these satellites into the sky and manage and maintain them and there's there's a lot of risk there I guess Google's the company that could really help out with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when you're Google and you've got, you know, the, the immense scads of cash sitting right. around that you do. Um, you're sleeping in a bed of money, essentially. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's utter, you know, <laughs> Scrooge McDuck, Scrooge McDuck yes. uh, you know, from the cartoons, diving into a pit of money and coming up you know, 10 <laughs> feet further down the hall. Yeah. Um, there we go. Very nice. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's 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 something that's uh, that's a ways off. It's not going to be like Waze, where they were able to integrate the technology uh, within a year. You know. Yeah, right on. All right, well, Seth Rosenblatt, thank you so much for joining me on Tech News tonight. I'm talking all no about problem. Google's probably next uh, next purchase here. Yeah, really appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Uh, tell people where they can follow your work online. Oh, sure. I'm at uh, CNETnews.com. Excellent. And uh, Seth R on Twitter. Is that right? Seth R. Yep. All right. Fantastic. Easy to remember. Thanks again, Seth. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
All right, and finally, you may remember the antitrust lawsuit against Apple, Google, Intel, and Adobe systems from employees who claimed the companies conspired to suppress salaries by not recruiting one another's workers. That was back in 2011. Well, the companies have agreed to pay $324.5 million to settle. Lawyers for employees who sued the companies are seeking a judge's preliminary approval of the deal, according to a filing in federal court in San Jose, California. The deal covers more than 64,000 technical employees, though workers settled for about a tenth of the $3 billion they plan to seek at a trial that was set for May 27th. Under federal antitrust law, damages won at a trial might have been three times as much. Under the settlement, the companies would deposit $1 million into an escrow account within 10 days of preliminary court approval, with the remainder due within seven days after final court approval. That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. We're off on Monday. It's a reminder for Memorial Day here in the U.S., but do not miss our morning tech news program, a show that I help produce in the morning. Tech News Today starts next Tuesday and through the rest of the week, every weekday, in fact, at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.